Hello everyone and welcome back, Dome here and on this video we're going to talk about another amazing controller for Cubase that I've been using for ages and one that many of you have asked me to do a video about and this is Complete Control from Native Instruments. So in this video I'm going to show you how it integrates with Cubase, what cool things you can do with it and how I personally use it right after this. So this is my complete control. I have the 49 key version, but I actually think I need to upgrade at some point to the 61 because I'm a keyboard player, so I need the extra range. Now, this is one of the controllers that I've been using for a long, long time. And quite a few of you guys, after my studio tour video, you asked me to talk about it and explain how I use it with Cubase. And that's what I'm gonna do on this video because complete control is a very, very capable controller. I wouldn't say that it substitutes my CC121 or my console one fader when it comes to mixing, but if you want a keyboard, a really, really good keyboard, and you want something that can control Cubase very, very well, you should really look into this. Of course, this video is not sponsored by Native Instruments or anything like that. This is absolutely my opinion after having used this controller for a while. The very first thing that I want to talk about is the key action. The key action is really, really nice. So let's try my roads here. So this is a really nice synth action key bed. I really like it. Uh, I know that uh, this is a Fatar kind of key bed, so these are really good quality key beds and I have no complaints about it. The aftertouch is really nice. Um, the action is really good. It's not springy. It doesn't feel cheap. I wouldn't get this if the key bed wasn't right. I refuse to get anything that has a bad action. This is my number one thing that I look for for a controller. So key bed, check. Really, really nice. I also like these LEDs. I've customized them myself using the Complete Control software. That's the only way to do this if you're not running Complete Control, the native instruments instrument inside Cubase. When you run Complete Control, these colors change. But if you're wondering, because I know that this is a question that comes up, I've done this manually, okay? So if you want the cool LEDs, go and do this in the Complete Control software. So we have all the usual suspects. We have the octave buttons here. And if you press shift, you can transpose by semitone, for example. So really self-explanatory, really nice feature. We have mod wheel, we have our pitch band, and we also have this touch strip here that sometimes I use for expression. Actually, this might be my only gripe with this controller, with this keyboard. I don't like the position of this touch strip. It really causes problems. Every time you have your hands on the mod wheel and the pitch band, you might accidentally touch it. And I don't like that because sometimes, especially when I have it aside on expression, which I think is also the default thing that it does, you have no sound and you're like, why don't I have any sound here? What's going on? You know, after all these years, I've trained myself not to touch it, but I hope that on the next revision, Native instruments are going to have something better or a better position for this. Maybe here or maybe here, I don't know. Or even up there would be better, to be honest with you. But that's my only gripe. Everything else is super, super nice. So let me show you. The first thing that you can do, obviously, with this controller is once you run it inside Cubase, it's pretty much plug and play. You can do all the usual functions. And when I say usual functions, you can obviously play your instruments straight away. The other thing that you can do is you have your transport controls right here. So I have play. I can activate and deactivate my loop, my cycle. I can activate my metronome. Really, really cool, really fast. I use these features all the time when I'm far away from my desk. I'm far away from my CC one to one and I just want to focus on producing music. So I'm, all right, cool. So maybe I wanna go down and play this pad. I can use this jog here 
I can use this kind of joystick thing and go up and down my tracks like this. Really, really useful. So now I can go up to my roads, then go down to my pad. And let's say I want to record my pad, I can hit record. Hit stop, good to go. Now let's say I made a mistake and I want to undo, I just hit undo here and I've undone the recording. Do I want to go back and redo? Shift and redo the recording. So all the basic controls are there. Now let's say I want to quantize for example, I can go here and click on quantize and immediately I can quantize my notes. This of course depend according to the values that you have set inside Cubase, but it works straight away. Now before I go into the mixing side of things, let me talk a little bit about what you can do with it as a MIDI controller. Because that's also what I really really like about Complete Control. What I like is that I can go here, I can go to my Retrolog instance and let's say I play something. As you can see all these knobs here when I am in MIDI mode they become CC controllers and again all these you can set them up in the complete control software. So in my case I've also renamed them so I have my expression here for my orchestral libraries, I have my breath controller, I have my cutoff, my resonance, my attack, decay, sustain, release and then I can immediately assign these to any instrument that I'm using. For example in this case I have assigned the cutoff to my retro cutoff. And of course I can do it very easily by right clicking, learn CC and then just moving the control here on complete control. So now I can do stuff like this. So it's a great keyboard to control your synths, control your filters, your envelopes, your LFOs, all these things. These are assignable. For the next version what I would really like to see would be more of these. So instead of 8, I would like to see 16, or if I'm greedy, 32, because I want to be able to assign everything on physical knobs. Then you can save a setup, and then for every instrument that you load, even if it's not a complete control NKS instrument, you could have a template like you can with a Machina, for example. If you haven't watched the video about the Machina, I'm going to link it right here. I have a template from Machina that you can load up and you can download for free. So up to this point, what do we have? We have transport control. We have counting as well, by the way, that I forgot to mention. So if you press shift and count in, this activates the pre-count when you want to record. So if I hit record, I get the pre-count now. If I hit shift and count in again, I deactivate it. And that's really, really handy. Now, the other thing that's really, really cool with complete control is that you can take control of your mixer. And this could be especially useful if you don't have something like the CC121 or the console fader one that I have right here and I use them all the time. This could be a really nice way to control your mixer. And let me show you how. So let's say I have this track, I can click on mixer here and now I am in the mixer mode. Now this is really really cool because what I like about it is that you can change your banks like this so you can scroll between your tracks but you can also see the levels of your tracks. So let's say I want to go back a few bars, as you can see I can move like this so I can just scroll like this this is really cool. This is actually one of my favorite functions that you can actually scroll and go, let's say I want to start from here. Oh, actually I want to start from the beginning of this loop. And now I can hit play. And you can see that I have all the tracks here. I can see the levels. It's really nice. I don't have to necessarily look at the screen. So let's say I want to make this sub a little bit louder or a bit quieter. What about this pad?
And this is great. Now, one of the things that is not so obvious sometimes, and even myself, I always forget how to do it, is how to switch these from controlling the volume to controlling the pan. And I don't know, myself, I always forget this. I don't know why. But it's actually a little bit weird how you do it. But let me show you in case you have it and you're wondering. You hit shift and then you go up on the joystick, okay? Down goes to volume, up goes to panning. So when I go down, I have my levels right there. So minus 514 dB or I have my panning. So when I release shift, it will stay, okay? So now I can start panning my elements around. And now I'm at this stage, I can say I want to solo a track. And the way you do this is you press the S button here and then you select the track that you want to solo. So let's try this. And you can mute the track in the same way. M. Really cool, really easy, really self-explanatory. There is not too many ways that you can go wrong with this controller. Everything is laid out, apart from the panning thing that's a little bit hard to find, at least for me. Let's go back to volume. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Now, there are some other cool things that you can do with complete control that are not so obvious. And this is, let's go back to MIDI. You can change the location of your cycle markers. Let me show you. You press loop, okay? And then you start scrolling with your joystick like this. And as you can see, I'm moving my loop like that, which is quite cool, especially if you're far away from your keyboard. So for example, I can say, okay, I want to scroll to this bar and now I have my cycle markers ready to go, okay? And now I can select a track. Let's go to my sub. So I can hit record whenever I want, whenever I'm ready and I'm ready to go. So let's go like this, shift, count in. I want to pre-count and let's record. Now, of course, if I want to, I can hit quantize, good to go. And I can go straight away to the next channel. You can also do this on the fly while you're recording. Let me show you, let's do the roads first. Okay, road's done. I can go down now and go to my pad. So I really like this workflow when I'm producing, it really helps me concentrate on the music, on my performance, rather than having to go and tweak different controllers, go to my keyboard, reach for my keyboard. This actually gives me quite a bit of hands-on control so that I can produce more easily and without thinking about everything else that's computer related, right? Now, last but not least, we also have the automation, right? So if I go back to my mixer here and I go to my, let's say my pad, I can go here and start automating the volume. I can automate the panning. So let's go and hit automation. And now let's record some automation. I'm gonna hit play. And 
the automation is recorded inside Cubase. Really, really self-explanatory. Now, the last thing that I want to show you, which is that if you have a rain selection here, then I can just click left and right on my joystick to move that selection. See, I can move it up, down, left, right, and so on and so forth. Now, this, I don't find it super useful. I prefer to do the editing using the mouse. But as you can see, you can basically go like this and navigate across the channels very, very easily. And you can actually select events, see? And sometimes this might be useful depending on your workflow. And it goes without saying that if you load a complete control instance inside Cubase, complete control comes alive. I could go to my plugin and say, okay, I wanna go to browser and select one of my instruments. I can also, for example, go and say, let's say I want to try out this vintage drum kit. And then I can hit load and it's right there inside Cubase. And as you can see, the LEDs change color. So this is also really cool, especially if you're using instruments that are NKS compatible. But for me, even when I'm using NKS compatible instruments, sometimes I like to use them, the actual plugin inside Cubase, mostly for compatibility reasons. Let's say I want to load a project later on and Complete Control has a completely different version and it doesn't load. At least I know that, okay, I'm gonna load this X synth and it's going to load so this is complete control this is how i use it and do i recommend it absolutely i mean this is a great all-round keyboard that can control cubase very very well and it's also quite light so it works well with trays like this so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope that this gives you an idea of what complete control can do for you and how it works inside cubase i hope you have already subscribed to the channel by now but if you haven't please don't forget to subscribe Hit the thumbs up if you found this video useful or entertaining and share it. I would really appreciate it. So until next time, have fun guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.